When the preparations were complete, Nori Wolfheim called them all together in the center of the room. Everyone know their places, he said when they were all assembled. Felix had sought Godric out, and instead of explaining himself, simply read some of the passages he'd written. The Slayer seemed to approve, and all was well again between them. Now Felix stood side by side with Godric in the small circle of dwarves huddling around Wolfheim. So, the Slayer and the Manling attacked the Skaven and draw them back to this room, said Nori, quickly outlining the plan. While we hold them here, Malbach will slip into the Horde and make his way back to the Armory, where he will release the Iron Beards. They will, in turn, attack the Horde from behind and drive them further into this room. When the Skaven are massed at the thickest, Ulgar will detonate Tebur's keg from afar, killing as many as possible. After that, it should be a simple matter for the Iron Beards to aid us in mopping up. Even though it was his plan, Felix couldn't help thinking how foolish it was. Everything had to work perfectly for it to succeed. If the Slayer failed to lure enough of the Skaven away from the armory, if Malbach turned coward and ran, if the Skaven managed to overwhelm the Reckoners too soon, if any of that failed, they were all doomed. He looked around at the others, hoping that they didn't feel the same way he did. Most had somber but determined looks. Gromnir's face was especially grim. Maybe the Reckoner was thinking of the fate that had befallen his brother. Felix thought about his own brother, Otto, in faraway Aldorf. How long had it been since they shared a meal? Years? He resolved to visit as soon as he could, if he survived. The Reckoners and Ulgar took up their stations in the room's one remaining entrance, while Godric, Felix, and Malbach proceeded towards the armory. When they reached the tunnel, Malbach took up his position. Good luck, engineer, said Felix stoically. Malbach nodded in return. Maybe the most important part of their plan rested upon his shoulders. Had that been a terrible mistake? They would soon find out. Godric and Felix proceeded down the tunnel towards the armory, alone once again. They said nothing because no words needed to be spoken. They were simply two warriors about to confront their doom. When they were near, Godric stopped. A slayer is enough of a distraction to get their attention, he said. You can go back to the others. Hope flared in Felix's chest. None of them had any decent odds of escaping Karaktam alive anyway. But Godric would face the worst odds of all. Half the Skaven horde would descend upon him. No, said Felix. What kind of epic ends with the subject disappearing down a tunnel never to be seen again? I'll try not to die before I lead them back to you, the Slayer offered. Felix shook his head. What can I say? I'm a slave of my art. No further words needed to be spoken between them. They placed their fates in the hands of the gods. One wanted to die gloriously, and the other wanted to write about it from the comforts of a warm inn. This day's end would see which one got their wish. The sound of a hundred rodents chanting a foul ritual grew louder as they passed down the corridor, until they emerged into the circular room which held the armory. The room was packed with skaven and smelled like sweat-soaked fur and musk. Tazuk stood in front of the armory door, dressed in his bone armor, while the rat slayer was at his right hand. They were the only skaven facing the entrance, and so far they hadn't noticed the pair. Godric stood at the threshold, waiting to be seen. The honor of a slayer was a peculiar thing, Felix reflected. Godric had killed more men than some entire armies, and yet he was reluctant to stab an enemy in the back. Finally, he walked up to one of the taller skaven and coughed. It cast a look over its shoulder, then squeaked and spun away. That seemed to satisfy whatever condition Godric's honor demanded because in the next second it was choking on its own blood with a gaping axe wound in the chest. Before the body even hit the ground, the slayer had ripped a dagger out of its sheath and hurled it right at Tazuk, 
If a rat ogre hadn't chosen that exact moment to stand upright and investigate the sound, it would have caught a sear in the throat. Instead, the rat ogre dropped with a dagger in the eye. Tazuk screeched in outrage, but the slayer was already at work, hewing at a skaven like a lumberjack chopping wood. One instant later, after Godric's first kill, Felix stabbed the skaven warrior in the gut before it even had a chance to draw its blade and then lashed out again, severing an arm and stabbing into the face behind it. It wasn't until the rat slayer bellowed in anger and tried to force its way through the crowd towards Godric and Felix that he realized maybe the biggest flaw in the plan. The entire thing was predicated on Godric retreating and drawing the skaven after him. But the Slayer had been thirsting for a chance to bring down the Rat Slayer ever since he'd laid eyes upon it. Instead of retreating, Gotrek hacked his way further into the crowd, bellowing challenges and threats in the direction of the crested Rat Ogre. Felix struggled to keep up. Gotrek swept his axe in wide arcs that clove flesh and bone with equal alacrity. But even he could sometimes let an enemy through his guard. Once, an axe blow severed a skaven's arm and knocked the ratman to the ground. An instant later, driven by some foul magic, no doubt originating from Tazuk, it leapt back to its feet, dagger in its other paw, and lunged at the slayer's back. If Felix hadn't stabbed it at the right moment, Godric might have found his doom at the hands of an opponent he'd already killed. Suddenly, a skaven spear lanced out of the crowd and caught Felix square in the chest. The air exploded out of his lungs and he was thrown backwards, tumbling to the ground. His vision reddened at the edges and he struggled to breathe. Dark blurs that he knew were Skaven warriors squealed in victory and pressed onward, only to be stopped at the last moment by a massive metal shape. It was Gromnir. The huge reckoner with the lion-crested helm bull-rushed a Skaven warrior that sported a mismatched tusk in the muzzle, slamming it with full force. As it stumbled back, he lashed out with his axe, decapitating another skaven and sending its head into the crowd. Nori Wolfheim reached down a hand and helped Felix to his feet. Surprised to find himself alive, Felix felt around his chest for blood, but only came away with a few damaged links of chain. If he survived this battle, he'd most likely have a deep bruise on the sternum, but his chain shirt protected him from what was probably a very dull spear. Aren't you supposed to be guarding the other room? He asked Wolfheim as the latter blocked the Skaven dagger. We've been following the Slayer for twenty years. I doubted he'd do as he was told, said the white-bearded Reckoner. Martinuk and Balir fanned out beside him. The longbeard wielded one of Martinuk's spare axes in one hand and a hammer in the other. Though there'd been plenty of spare armor salvaged from the Skaven sentries, he wore only the clothes they found him in. Felix could easily imagine him grumpily refusing to don anything previously worn by a rat. All right, brother dwarves, said Nori Wolfheim. We are all slayers now. Sell your lives dearly and try to take as many of them with you as you can. Ulgar looked up at where Tazuk stood on the stone dais in the center of the room. That one killed my apprentice. If you can keep the rat man off my back, I'll show him that no skaven sorcery is match for Dawi rune magic. The dwarves quickly formed a wall around the runesmith and began to tear into their foes. Though they were few in number, they were heavily armed and armored, and far better trained than any skaven fighter. When Wolfheim had proclaimed a single Reckoner to be worth ten Skaven lives, he was being pragmatic, not optimistic. Still, thought Felix, as he fell in beside the Reckoners, the sheer number of enemy fighters would beat them down eventually. Exhaustion would slow their reflexes, or pure chance might thin their numbers. A Skaven victory seemed inevitable. Elsewhere, the tide of the battle was conspiring to keep the two slayers apart. Though both fighters shouted oaths and curses at one another, somehow they couldn't quite meet. Finally, the last few ranks of Skaven parted, and there was nothing to hold them back from each other. Suddenly, Tazuk screeched and pointed at a small group of armored reckoners near the door. Reluctantly, the Ratslayer disengaged and turned towards them. 
Come back here, you filthy, awful-eating, flea-bitten scrug lover Godric bellowed, shaking his fist at the retreating rat slayer. A Skaven warrior dared to attack him. He killed it almost indignantly, and then began hacking his way towards the Reckoners. Suddenly, a small grey Skaven shoved into Felix. In a flash, Felix had brought Karagul around, ready to cut it down. At the last second, he realized it was no Skaven at all, it was Malbach. Frantic and terrified, the engineer disappeared into the melee, all but ignored by the other Skaven. That Ulgar's rune magic had worked was a minor miracle, but a greater one was that Malbach was making his way towards the door. Glorin's death had matured the young engineer. If he survived, he would be a better dwarf overall. Martinuk fought close to Felix, assuming the same position Felix usually assumed when he fought with the Slayer. The mercenary fought quick and dirty, disemboweling the opponents more often than not and leaving them to bleed their lives onto the ground. He just killed a large black ratman with red eyes when Felix noticed him drop the guard and stumble backwards, as a few metal stars blossomed out of his chest. A slim skaven with a whip-like body stood only a few feet away. Certain that it killed the mercenary, it then turned towards Felix, fanning more throwing daggers in its hand like a gambler with a deck of cards. One moment later, Martinuk's blade pierced its chest and it dropped to the ground, dead as a stone. Mortally wounded, the mercenary couldn't properly defend himself. Though Felix struggled to reach him, he disappeared under a hundred skaven bodies. When they were done with him, they rose with dripping blades and came for the rest of the company. A huge form shoved its way to the front of the press of Skaven. The rat slayer was half again as tall as Felix. Its crest was as stiff and straight as a horse's freshly cut mane, and its pallid skin was mottled and scarred. From this distance, Felix could see a thin sheen of unshaven fur that covered its tattooed body. It had already hacked into the Skaven army to get to them and evidence of the mayhem it had caused lay all around it. A piece of meat was draped limply over its shoulder, a long, purplish vein painting blood over its chest. The other skaven drew back, much as a school of minnows part before a shark, giving the huge beast room to do as it wanted. The rat's lair picked its target carefully, the biggest, most intimidating among them. Though Felix was the tallest of the lot, Gromnir easily outweighed him in muscle alone and his mail made him almost unstoppable. The rat's lair shifted its grip on its enormous golden hammer. The craftsmanship of the weapon was exquisite. Runes covered its length in an intricate pattern which formed a dragon's head, its open jaw embossed onto the hammer's face. A circle cleared around Gromnir and the rat's lair. No skaven was brave enough to come between them. The crested rat took a step forward, and then another, and then it rushed forward as it swept its arms downward in an overhand strike. Gromnir deflected a blow with his shield. Any other weapon would have bounced harmlessly off the dwarf-crafted steel, but the runes on the flame hammer flared to life, and it left a furrow of melted slag across the face of Gromnir's shield. The hammer face hit the floor hard, kicking up fragments of glowing rock with the impact. Gromnir gasped as heat seared his arm and shook his shield loose. It broke in two as it hit the ground, the halves reminding Felix of a shattered plate. Undeterred, Gromnir shifted to a two-handed grip on his weapon and lashed out in a vicious sweep that would have cut the rat's lair in two had it connected. Instead, the giant rat dexterously parried Gromnir's axe with the haft of the hammer, and then stepped forward and struck the reckoner square in the breastplate. Though it looked to Felix that the blow had been a glancing one, Gromnir bellowed in pain and fell back glowing at his armor. A glowing red circle had twisted the metal and Felix smelled sizzling flesh. Gromnir was essentially cooking inside his armor. Wolfheim rushed in to try to cover for the Reckoner, but the Rat Slayer shifted opponents seamlessly. Felix seemed to notice that the runes on the flame hammer seemed to sputter to life and then die again at random, as if the runes that lined its length would not work properly for a Skaven. The rat slayer seemed to recognize when the weapon wasn't functioning properly, parrying when the runes were dim and attacking ferociously when they flared into life. The battle raged on with furious intensity while both fighters exchanged blows. 
Unfortunately, the white-bearded Reckoner had learned from the Ratslayer's battle with Gromnir and watched the hammer warily. The Ratslayer took advantage of the situation, fainting with the weapon and then kicking out with a clawed foot that knocked Wolfheim to the ground. Felix was the only one left standing, and the Ratslayer's eyes narrowed as they turned upon him. His palm was sweaty and he shifted his grip on Karagul. The beast had just dispatched their most powerful fighters in mere seconds. What hope did he have? Though Karagul was also a rune weapon, it was attuned to dragons, and he figured that the likeness of one on the hammer's head wouldn't count for much. The speed of the rat slayer's attack belied its size. Felix was barely able to get Karagul to parry. Though he'd put all the strength into the block, the skaven was far stronger. Its strike batted aside his sword and passed close enough to his head for the wind of its passing to tug at his hair. The spot where Karagul had impacted the golden hammer glowed cherry red, and though it took a moment for the heat to radiate up the blade, Felix gasped in pain. Despite the searing heat, he didn't dare to drop the blade. Instead, he lunged at the rat slayer and cut along its thigh. It screeched in pain, but the wound only seemed to anger it, and it struck again, the hammer passing inches above his head. Once again, Felix attacked, stabbing at the wrist. He was rewarded by a gout of blood, but not enough to disable it. The rat slayer shrugged off the wound and raised the hammer overhead. Felix watched it intently, knowing that one blow could send him into Moore's embrace. But suddenly, the rat slayer snatched at him with its other hand, catching him hard about the throat. Claws dug into his soft flesh like daggers, and he was lifted into the air. He had fallen prey to the same trick that felled Wolfheim. He'd watched the weapon and not the fighter. With the air supply cut off, he flailed about desperately with Karagul, but wasn't able to do much damage while he was dangling in the air. The rat slayer raised its hammer to end him, but a voice cut through the crowd. Trying to steal my doom, man Ling? It was Godrek. Small specks of blood and fur and brain matter were spattered about his body, and it gave the impression of a grinning corpse. Sweat had mingled with Skaven blood, and he left a bloody trail as he advanced into the circle of Ratman, axe at the ready. The Rat Slayer grinned evilly and casually tossed Felix aside. He landed in a heap close to Nori Wolfheim. Air rushed back into his lungs and his vision finally cleared. He felt like he had a crushed windpipe and it was difficult to breathe. But as he stood, a quick inventory told him that aside from a few minor scratches, he was not hurt. In the center of the room, Tazuk the Mad was obviously displeased that his army had ceased to fight the intruders and screeched orders for them to attack. A few brave ratmen began to once again advance on the dwarves, but the rat slayer countermanded them with a bellow. He wanted no interference in this battle. Surprisingly, the Skaven drew back at this command. Felix wondered who really was in charge there, Tazuk or the rat slayer. The two opponents faced off and slowly began to circle each other, each testing his opponent out with a flurry of blows that was quickly parried. Each time the two weapons connected, sparks showered the floor around them, which Felix hoped were coming from the Rat Slayer's hammer and not Godric's axe. He'd always thought that the runes on the Slayer's weapon made it invulnerable, but as he watched the metal gradually redden under the Rat Slayer's onslaught, he wasn't so sure. Balir told them that Karaktam had produced some of the finest weapons of the dwarf race. Could in fact the flame hammer be a match for the axe of Godrek? The rat slayer attacked in earnest now, raining blow after blow upon Godrek, forcing him to give ground reluctantly. The slayer was by far the strongest dwarf Felix had ever met, but a skaven beast had a dwarf's frame and an ogre's muscle. The flame hammer lashed in golden arcs that descended again and again each blow lethal, each one barely turned aside by Godric's axe. The Slayer's weapon was glowing merrily now from blade to haft, and the smell of burning flesh polluted the air. The runes on the flame hammer sometimes sputtered out, forcing the Rat Slayer to retreat, but far less often than in battle with Nori Wolfheim. It was as if the weapon recognized the power in Godric's axe and was determined to match it with its own. Godric's hands and arms were seared, and he grimaced as the weapon betrayed him, but it was a testament to his willpower that he held fast to the axe, even though it had turned into a burning brand. 
Felix could feel waves of heat coming off the rune weapon, and it left a trail as it arched into the air. No matter how tough Godric was, there would come a time when his hands were seared into useless lumps. And after that, it was only a matter of time until the Rat Slayer brought him down. But suddenly, it looked like it was over. The Rat Slayer fainted left, and Godric couldn't recover in time. The hammer smashed into his right arm with a sickening thud and a sizzle of burning flesh. The Rat Slayer leered, and instead of pulling the weapon back for the killing blow, it pressed it further into the wound, reveling in the pain it had to be inflicting. Godric grimaced in agony. Any other dwarf would have dropped his weapon and collapsed. But Godric merely shifted his axe to the other hand and struck out. Not for the Rat Slayer, but at the hammer itself. More sparks burst forth, and the flame hammer was knocked away, leaving Godric with a new mark a brand on the right arm in the shape of a dragon's grinning mouth. The Rat Slayer roared again and struck out with the hammer. Instead of parrying, Godric chopped at the weapon again. Confused by this new tactic, the Rat Slayer stepped back, but Godric pursued. Instead of targeting the beast, he went after the flame hammer with a vengeance, chopping at it again and again. On the few occasions when the Rat Slayer managed to attack, the hammer was met by full force with Godric's axe and every time the two weapons met, the combatants were showered in sparks. Felix couldn't tell which weapon was giving them off. The Slayer's axe was now glowing so ferociously that he couldn't see if the blade was notched, and the flame hammer was so intricately carved that any crack was lost among the runes. It was a daring strategy. True to his word, Godric was literally pitting his axe against the flame hammer, gambling that the ancient weapons myths of Karaktam couldn't have crafted a weapon to match its power. His grimace of pain had twisted into a mad grin as he struck with such fury that the Rat Slayer was forced to go to its knees. Godric had become a berserker, crazed with pain and battle lust. He abandoned all pretense of skill and simply beat at the Rat Slayer with abandon. The White Hot Axe crashed down again and again on the haft of the Flame Hammer, until, with a flash of brilliant light, it snapped, and the rune axe buried itself in the Rat Slayer's skull. So mad was Godric with Berserker Fury that he didn't even realize that he'd killed the opponent until three strikes later. He arose from the corpse like some avatar of grim violence, breathing heavily, a silver snake of saliva matting his fiery beard. Not a creature stirred. Not a sound intruded upon that place but the Slayer's tortured breath. He turned upon the other Skaven, madly daring them to attack him, but not one of them moved. Even Tazuk was in quiet contemplation of the massacre he'd witnessed. A baritone rumble broke the silence, the sound of rocks shifting deep beneath the earth. The vault door shifted behind Tazuk, and then, with a gasp, came open. A glittering horde emerged, dressed in shimmering Gromril and wielding sparkling weaponry. At their force to the pathetic-looking Skaven warrior that was not a Skaven at all. Malbach had taken advantage of the distraction to open the vault, and the captured dwarves poured out, hacking into the Skaven army from the rear with weapons from the days of yore. Caught between Godric and the Reckoners on one side, and the heavily armored dwarves on the other, the Skaven had no choice but to fight, and the room dissolved into chaos. It was every warrior for himself. Felix started to assume his customary position behind and to the left of the Slayer, but quickly realized that Godric was fighting left-handed now and shifted to the other side. If the fight with the Rat Slayer had tired him at all, Godric didn't show it. If anything, he drew power from the wounds and cut into the Skaven army like a scythe into wheat. At one point, Felix saw a great cave bear rear out of the melee and strike down Tazwick with a blow from a glowing white staff. He soon realized it was not a cave bear. Ulgar was above the down gray seer and struck him again and again with the butt of his staff, and with each blow bellowing out, This is for my apprentice, you vermin-loving whore son. All of a sudden, the press of Skaven gave way to armored dwarves, and Felix realized they'd met the iron beards in the middle. Skaven corpses lay all around them. A few survivors were fleeing for the exits as fast as their paws could carry them. Gromnir was dead. He'd removed his melted armor and fought on bare-chested until a Skaven spear had taken him in the gut. 
he had killed three more ratmen before succumbing to the wounds. They found Balir's body under a pile of skaven, a mad smile plastered upon his face. He demanded vengeance for what the rats had done to his clan, and he'd achieved it in the end. After the remaining dwarves had counted their dead, they greeted their brothers from the armory. Though each was resplendent in some of the finest armor Felix had ever seen, when they removed their visors, he could see gaunt, half-starving faces. So weakened they were from hunger and battle, that some couldn't even lift their axes. Of the dwarfs who'd set out of Barakvar, Nori Wulfame, Ulgar, and Malbak had survived, and each of them had been changed by the horrors they'd witnessed. Only Gotrek, by now immune to horror, was unchanged. He'd cursed Ulgar when the runesmith had insisted on putting his broken arm in a sling, and complained bitterly when he put a salve on the brand he'd gotten on the right arm. Nori Wolfheim waited patiently for Ulgar to finish before he laid into the slayer. We had a plan, didn't we? You were supposed to lure them back to the experiment room. Godric merely shrugged, then winced in pain and rubbed his shoulder. He favored the Reckoner with a glare. Plans change. Seems to have worked out in the end. Speaking about the experiment room, said Felix, didn't we... A dull carumph echoed through the hold, and the hole through which they'd entered coughed rock dust. Tevor Tanelson's keg of black powder had gone off after all. Maybe it had simply gone off on its own. More likely, some of the fleeing Skaven hadn't been able to restrain their curiosity. Either way, Glorin could finally rest in peace. It was Nori Wolfame that finally remembered the purpose of their quest. He found the body of Tazuk and pried the Book of Grudges free from the paws that clutched it even in death. By Grungni's hairy beard, he exclaimed when he opened it. What's wrong? asked Felix. Instead of answering, Wolfame passed him the book. The letter felt strange and coarse in Felix's hands. The tome was very thin, too thin to hold all the grudges of Baragvar from now to antiquity. When he opened it, he could see why. It was filled with nothing but scrawled characters interspersed with pictures of Skaven, sometimes involved in lewd acts. It's not the book of grudges, he said simply. He passed it to Gotrek, who leafed through it himself. I don't believe it, said the slayer. Malbat stared at the book, then at the carnage that lay all around them. If that's not the book of grudges, then where is it? We searched the vault of Moose in Baldurk, and it wasn't there. Felix stared at the corpse of Tazuk. It had never been a question that a Skaven seer was mad. He dressed up his own warriors in the skins of dwarves, and even tried to cross Dawi with Skaven in a hideous experiment. He tried to emulate the dwarves in every way. So why create a fake book? Why not try to steal the real one? Felix creased his brow. Maybe he had. They did find Skaven's spore in the vault of Moose and Baldurk, after all. But they hadn't found any Skaven. And Godric himself had told them that no break-in had occurred. Suddenly, Felix remembered a huge statue of Grimnir outside the Great Hall, where they first engaged the Ratman. And then there were the piles of gold in the next room. What if the Ratman had broken into the vault and not been able to get out? I think I know what happened to the real Book of Grudges, he said. You'd better know what you're doing, Man Ling, said Gotrek balefully. The trip back to the surface had been harrowing. They'd found a store of moldy cheese and wheat that the Skaven hadn't fouled, and though it wasn't much, the starving Ironbeards had fallen upon it like it was a king's banquet. Though the Skaven had been vanquished, the dwarves still encountered scattered pockets of resistance as they fought their way back to the surface. If not for the weapons they salvaged from the armory of Karaktam, they might not have made it. While none of the weapons they found was the equal of the flame hammer, Put together with Gromril armor, the small group of dwarves was a force to be reckoned with regardless. Halfway to the surface, they encountered Vabur Nerinson, who led a small force of dwarf ironbreakers. After a hearty greeting and a moment of silent contemplation, for those who didn't make it, 
he'd escorted them the rest of the way back to the barrack. Now they stood once again outside the vault of Moose and Baldurk, thinner in number, but fatter in great deeds. Though the Iron Beards had returned to their holds after paying tribute to the king in the form of a fabulous rune weapon and Gromril, Nori Wulfheim, Malbach, Vabur, and Ulgar had chosen to stay with Godric and Felix. King Grundadrak stood nearby, arms folded across his chest, his golden crown sitting uneasily on his bald head. We have searched this vault before, Herr Jaeger, said the king angrily. I will be quite displeased if we have to do it again. But now we know exactly what we're looking for, said Felix, nodding at Malbach. The apprentice engineer had kept his cave and skin and wore it now like a cape, a badge of honor for one who had a very short supply when they'd originally left the barrack. He stepped forward and traced the opening runes, humming the correct melody to activate them, and then hold open the door. As Grundadrak watched suspiciously, Felix handed Godric a cruder axe than the Slayer's own weapon, one that wouldn't be mourned if it were to suffer damage from what he was about to do with it. Godric stepped past the engineer and hefted the weapon. Before anyone could react, he brought it down in an overhead arc that cut the massive golden statue of Grimnir in half. Three desiccated Skaven corpses tumbled out of its interior. It was obvious that they had starved to death. He bent down and pulled a big and ornate book out of their clutches. Without a word, he marched over to Grundadrak and shoved it into his hands. They exchanged a long and dangerous look, and then the Slayer spun on his heel and stomped down the hole. Felix turned and followed. Hey, I haven't dismissed you yet bellowed Grundadrak, holding the Book of Grudges in his hands. Where are you going, Gurnison? Godric answered without even turning around. I'm going to get myself a drink. The End You've listened to The Reckoning, a Godric and Felix story written by Jordan Ellinger.